back to the channel everyone. The next video in this series on full frame repair is called starting over because what we're going to do now, and this is especially true if you're using a shark measuring system, once we've got up here and we've finished pulling our front end, before we've even got to these rails, we're going to start over and start and just double check all our dimensions from the rear. And I know you probably don't want to hear that, but in the, when I started this series, I said that uh, truck frame gets hit on one corner, how it affects the whole thing. Well, it's true when you're pulling on a frame, and that's why we use so many chains and anchors. Anytime you're pulling on one section, you're affecting everything else. So we had everything all squared up, and we've got our front lined up. Other than front rails, we haven't even worried about those yet. We want to go back and just double check these points in relation to how this uh, lower area under the uh, cowl is measured and then the front. And when I said it's more important on the, the shark system because the beam that they use isn't long enough to measure this whole thing at once. So we're going to have, when we started out, we had the beam back here to measure all these points. When we come up here, it's not long enough to pick anything up. So we had to slide the beam up. We had to start with new points. The Genesis system, I'm not sure how much length you'll be able to measure. Uh, I've used it before, limited use, and I've never done a truck frame with it. But you, you may have to do the same thing. If you've got center line gauges, you're fine because hopefully you've used a whole bunch of them on this whole truck frame. But what I want you to do is just start from square one again, and you don't have to worry about diamond. If you've anchored the right diamond, you won't affect that. Didn't get affected but you'll have a little center line issue on it, and it's usually only a couple millimeters. But if we come back here and we use this for our reference point again, and we measure underneath this cowl, we may be, instead of before, we were maybe a, maybe a zero and one off of center, we may have a one and a two now. So a little bit of pressure back here, we line that up, and then we just double check these measurements under our suspension points, and we may be one or two millimeters off there. And if you leave a couple millimeters there, and I know I've said it before, people say, well, it's a truck frame, they're not built that close. But a couple millimeters here is gonna give you, maybe it could be three or four millimeters or a little more out front by the time you're done. And that may be all that you needed to get something to fit correctly. So it's just a matter of going back, starting from scratch, and just tweaking it that last final time. And if you remember, if you've watched these videos on this series, I said that you can get these truck frames pretty much like a unibody car within a couple millimeters of each other. So um, if you follow these steps and you want to do this correctly and figure out how these truck frames bend, this is what you need to do. And one thing which I didn't talk about in that last one, we were squaring up the front. I want to cover that right now real quick, and then we'll move on to the front rails. I said on these Chevy GMC pickup trucks, we use this point up here. This is down in front of the vehicle looking back. And this is a cross member under the engine, the lower control points. And I don't know why it is, but these are good places to measure. But Whenever I've measured these, this say this front end is over, say we're gonna say uh, 10 millimeters, eight millimeters right in this area, let's go with eight. If this one is eight millimeters that way, this one should be eight millimeters in. Oh, wait a minute, I wrote that backwards. Let me redo that. This would be out eight millimeters and this would be a negative. It should be, but anytime I've measured these with, say, the shark measuring system, there's usually a three or four millimeter difference between point to point. So this may only show that it's four millimeters in. Now, there's not gonna be any damage between these two points. You know, these cross members, they're that big around. They're heavy, they're tough. It didn't bend, it didn't get compressed, it didn't stretch in that area. It's just one of those discrepancies that the measuring system, and I don't know exactly how they work, how their computers work, but it'll pick it up and it'll show that there's damage from here to here, which isn't the case. But what I've also found, when you pull that direction you need to go, when you get done, 
it might it won't have a four millimeter difference it might be a two or three but that four millimeters will usually disappear a little bit but here's the point I want to make you want to make these even you don't want to just say okay I got one to zero and this one stayed at four I got a zero here that's all I'm worried about make them both it could be a plus two on one side or the other it could be a minus two that number should just match and that'll give you a center point now like I said I don't know why that is a discrepancy in those measuring systems but I don't know if I've ever maybe a handful out of all the frames I've done where those measure within either zero tolerances or one millimeter most of them there's at least a two but I've seen them up four or five millimeters so keep that in mind and just make sure both these numbers are either going to be positive or negative just make sure they're the same once you get that squared up then you can focus you know everything is good your suspension is good do your final pulling on your front rails to put those where you need them there might have you know might have a little height issue you're probably not going to have a whole lot you're not going to have that 12 millimeters side sway now in these front rails uh, you're going to be down fairly close two three four millimeters and when you pull on these put a chain around this cross member somewhere and anchor that so when you're pulling on this you're not affecting this because there's no clamps out here to hold it your clamps are your chains now we're back into here and you got a lot of leverage up front so just hold on to that front section where you want it and then uh, do your uh, final pull so the next video I'm going to show and I didn't cover this right off the bat it's more of an advanced setup because it's just I'm trying to keep these sections separate so you could just pull up a specific video if you want a little information on something so the advanced setup is going to be dealing with some height issues and it's actually pretty simple to take care of but I'll discuss that in the next video so thanks for watching